just I graduated in '65, and then um, I went around for for a year, and then around '66, '67, I stayed in Manila looking for for, for work. And uh, around that time, and I'm not sure of my dates whatsoever, there was a small bistro type that opened in Mabini or uh, around Mabini uh, called 20 to a Great November in Your Soul. And I would go there to drink and have my tea leaves read because there was a lady there who used to read uh, tea leaves. And there was this guy who was walking around and I said, who is that guy? And they said, he's the owner of the, of, of the shop. Uh, and his name is Ishmael Bernal. Uh, so um, we were on good evening uh, type of relationship. Well, I didn't know anything at all. And um, from there, I, I, I was able to do Ganito Kami Noon. We won several awards for that. And then uh, nothing. And then one time, I forget, I forget the dates whatsoever. Uh, I'm in a party, and this guy comes over to me, and I say, and I recognize it's Bernal, and he says, uh, "So you do production design? Uh, I'm looking for a production designer." And and, and since Ganito Camino on had American money, it was actually Ganito Camino on was shot with all the tail ends of Apocalypse Now. Um, Coppola would throw those away and see Eddie Romero got them all and put them together and that's Ganito Camino on, right? And he, he was interested in, in that whole thing and he said, would you be interested in doing production design for me? And I said, yeah, I would. I said, hey, but I'm warning you. I mean, he said, I'm uh, I'm, I work with Mother Lily, and uh, she's really not into production design. You, you, you're not going to be paid what you think you should be paid. Uh, he he warned me. He, he was very straight about that, and uh, so I said, "No, I'm, I'm willing willing to try it out." And um, so we did. We we worked together. Uh, one thing is what I brought to the to my work was I would buy these ledgers, these accounting ledgers. Uh, it must have the hard hard cover ledgers, and I would put each sequence on one page, and then the sequence I would break it down in terms of requirements, a script requirement, and then. Uh, creative requirements that, that would add to, to, to this. He was very, very, very impressed with that. Uh, it, as a matter of fact, uh, he borrowed my ledger for Ganito Camino on, or was it Manila by night? I forget. Uh, way after that, because he wanted to show to his uh, new production designers the kind of work that, that, that you could do. He wanted that. Of course, he never returned it to me, and I, I, I never found it again. Uh, but anyway, that, that was what we had. Then, on the first day of shoot, he gave me advice, and he said, uh, whatever you do with Mother Lily, you can fight, you can do anything you want with her. Whatever you do, don't steal from her. Don't take one peso that doesn't belong to you. And I followed that uh, advice uh, with mother and, uh, well, uh, that, that, that kind of uh, paved the way with, uh, uh, for me with mother Lily, which is really good advice. Uh, anyway, what would happen is um, we'd set up and then after we'd set up, we'd sit together. 
waiting for uh, lights or for the actor who was late or whatever it was. But, but he would sit together for the longest time and uh, he said, you know, I only do this with Mel Chonglo and now with you. Uh, he considered Mel and me as his favorite production designers uh, who felt he felt uh, contributed really to the to the work that was more than decoration. Yeah, like how you work with God. Yeah, yeah, precisely. Uh, I, I think I, that that was the pivotal point for production design that, that that particular time because what we were doing is we were learning from Apocalypse Now. Mm -hmm. We saw what production design could be because before that. Uh, production design was basically the script says he hands a piece of paper you, you just have the paper I mean you you did you didn't dress the office you didn't dress the etc so so you know we had a, a really 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 good relationship which is really funny because he was a, an avowed communist and I was a firmly entrenched Burgess no? uh, we didn't meet eye to eye on that, but but we wouldn't talk about that. Mm -hmm. we, we had we had a really uh, uh, friendship uh, that was based on on art, on cinematic art. I, I imagine we talk a lot about that, and uh, plus a lot of cheesiness, etc., etc. Because we believed that you had to know what was going on in the movie world all the time so that you know uh, you, if, if, you, if you're going to if, if you're going to cast somebody you want to know that that person shows up on time that person is magulo etc mm -hmm. etc et there's a, a lot involved uh, which is something that Rodel Cruz never understood he would just consider it as just cheesiness yeah. and he wouldn't have anything to do with it so anyway, uh, we did uh, Believe It Boys, which was uh, rough. We, we, we shot inside the jail the whole time. Uh, um, and then uh, he, he called me one time and he says, I'm, I'm going to be doing something that's major big. He said, uh, it's called Manila by Night. And uh, we, we show Manila by night. Okay, for sure, Playgirl was the uh, uh, girlfriend is, was first, and ganito kam ang uh, ito bang ating mga anak was last. Okay. So I think Believe It Boys came in a second, Pabling, uh -huh. and then Manila by night was the fourth. And it didn't work after. Not anymore because after Ito Bang Ating Mga Anak uh, already came Himala and Oro Plata Mata. So there's a change there. Um, we did research for uh, Manila by, by Night. Uh, we were taken to the really, really, really low dives of, of Manila. I, as a bachelor, I, I really went around Manila on my own. Uh, mm -hmm. I was a Burgess that walked around Avenida Rizal and Misericordia and everything I really knew, but I didn't know that these things existed. You were talking about uh, different types of whorehouses. Yeah. Uh, you, you have the classical types uh, to expect, but one thing I found really strange was um, an old house, probably a uh, well-to-do, upper, upper, middle class type of house. Mm -hmm. So you go up these stairs and then there's a kind of little lobby before you enter the house and it's with machuca tiles um, and, um, and, and, and barred windows before you enter the, the living room, etc. And in the machuca tiles uh, area where, where, where chairs, all around, and the girls would sit there. And the girls were not pok-pok type dress, uh, uh, 
of sexy. They were, they were more, more like schoolgirls. Or frankly, house help. Um, mm -hmm. uh, long dresses, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, very strange, very weird. Uh, we made a point to use that in the movie, but we didn't. We, we were not able to fit that in. There, um, we, we went to some, a lot of uh, gay, gay clubs, all kinds, uh, featuring uh, live, live Toro with brothers. Uh, and one thing again, that I, I was picking up all of these things, there was this guy who was in many, he'd go around and he'd make a fan out of 100 peso bills. But I mean, a lot. I mean, probably there was about 2,000 pesos, uh, like, more, like more than 20, and go this way. Uh, you, but I'm, let's cut the crap. Let's cut the small talk. I got the money. Uh, there's so many of these things, completely so many of these things that uh, I, I made notes of and, and, and I thought I wanted to include uh, in, in the movie. Um, but at the same time, I started to realize that Bernal would not just sit there and watch because for me, my, my work was most, mostly visual. Mm -hmm. Si Bernal was both visual and our our of mm -hmm. um, sound. He would sit down with the masajistas and talk with them. And he talked with them uh, in terms of one of the boys or one of the girls. Mm -hmm. And then he would come and tell me, you know, our script is wrong. The girls don't talk about poverty. The girls don't talk about how poor they are and how hard their life is. They talk about movie cheese mints. They talk about at that time there were those tables that you you you, you shot uh, uh, the, the video tables, the very very early ones. Mm -hmm. They would talk about that and how to get high points because boy, since they do, since especially Kumasarista, they wait they so wait. much. So they're playing these things. They're all ex. They were all experts at, at this thing. And Bernal would listen to the level of the sound level of the way they would talk, the way they 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 would deal with each other. They they didn't as you, like you can see in the movie when there's a whore, she talks to you like a whore. Bucket. Mm -hmm. uh, in that one, uh, he said they're girls. Yeah. They're girls. He, he would pick this up, and then I would see him translate that to his actors. When we went uh, location hunting, uh, he was looking for more than location hunting. He was, he was looking for human behavior uh, in, in, in this sense. And of course, I learned that. I also learned that. Although I don't have the ease that he had of being able to sit down with a group of um, working gays or working uh, girls and and be part of them, be one of them. I, I didn't have that, uh, uh, that that ease that he had, no? Uh, so I, I've always, but, 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 but I knew that, for example, at that point, uh, people don't talk about the situation that they're in because they already know that. They, they, they know that every day. They always talk about something else, no? So that that was that was a very very big lesson for me from from Bernard. We decided that uh, uh, we were going to shoot it in what do you call this thing in? Oh dear, here, here's where I told you that um, Philam 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 subdivision, mm -hmm. uh, and he would be going to Manila for for these things. Uh -huh. Uh, so, so that was that. One thing you have to know, we had decided very early in the game that we were not, the, except for the Luneta portion in the end, mm -hmm. none of those things were stolen shots. We would, we would start at one in the morning and we would take over the scene 
in Manila. And all that was we. Uh, I, I also was proud director for, for, for that. And, and we'd bring in all of the people in, to, including the jeeps and everything. All that was set up so that we had complete control. So for example, um, in one scene, I forget what, what the place is called, but it's behind Odeon Theater in uh, Rizal Avenue. Okay. That's where Mapua is. There's a Mapua there. Yes. yes. There's a Mapua in, um, in Intramuros, but there was a, a Mapua there. So for example, when we set that up, we put in a lot of students, and they had uh, T-squares, because they, they were going to Ma uh, uh, Mapua uh, and uh, the time of the evening, uh, we took that all into account. No? So in other words, uh, it, was, uh, it, it was a joy working in that uh, production because two things we decided, that we were going to set up everything, including a taxi wreck, uh, there, there was a crash accident, so all of that was set up. But we also, that was my idea, that let's, let's put the scenes that we have I in times of Piesta uh, Minat, uh, what do you say, All Saints so Day, Day, Valentine's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so it was a year. Yeah, it, was a, it, it, it covered a year. Mm -hmm. And we, we were doing it in terms of, uh, of, of uh, feasts. The season, the seasons, yeah. Um, like I said earlier, we, we wanted to show a lot of the whorehouses, both uh, uh, female and male. But when we start, when, when, when the script came in, uh, the script uh, dictated the parameters. Mm -hmm. There were things that we just couldn't uh, go into. And if we went out of our way to do that, it would. Uh, what you call this, uh, get in the way of the storytelling. Mm -hmm. But uh, that final chase scene with, with uh, Cherie, we started in an in Emerald, Emerald uh, Massage Parlor in Rojas, Rojas Boulevard. Go to behind that, uh, I forget the name of the street behind Rojas Boulevard, it's parallel. And we shot that there, and then we moved into um, Vito Cruz, uh, turned left to the mall, and uh, yeah, all the way up to Corta uh, Pitate, which is, uh, I forget what it's called now. Uh, so we, we, uh, it was, uh, uh, we were tracking Manila, we were not just using interesting streets yeah. uh, uh, you know you know what I mean I mean uh, you see these uh, chase sequences in the born identity here in in Manila and they have they're in this traffic and then all of a sudden they're in, in another place the main traffic you know why connection yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, well I'm connection so no not at all I mean so, so, so much so they changed the movie to uh, which I refuse to, I, I refuse to say. It's always Manila by night. It's not city yeah, after dark. Yeah. Um, and and the funny part about that is that we chose the situations uh, as it, it. We didn't go out of our way to show how rotten Manila was. It was just that Manila was rotten. Um, you just pointed the camera, and that love scene between Rio Luxin and Sherry Hill was beside an estero, and you could yeah. smell it. You could really yeah. smell it. Yeah. 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 When it was a massage uh, joint, uh, there was a decision that, okay, this is going to be a massage joint in Rojas Boulevard. Uh, but uh, there are other things like the hospital where Alma Moreno. Uh, so is, it, yeah. It was chosen because it was near Rojas Boulevard also, mm -hmm. so that there would be a connection uh, which is in the Quirino Avenue, the, the hospital there, uh, yeah. practically at the corner of uh, Rojas and Quirino Avenue. So you were true to the geography? 
as much as possible, yeah, as much as possible. Um, the, the House of Lorna was in Pasay. Pasay. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought it would be somewhere uh, near Kondo. No, okay. no. It was Pasay. Pasay okay. yeah. okay. Which connected to the mall of uh, Rizal Memorial. Now, ah, yeah. I see. That, 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 that's that's the street. street. What, what do you call that street? Uh, is, it, is it Pasa? Uh, Leverisa. Lever is it? No. I, I forget. Yeah. I forget. That's where uh, I was before. The, the old building. Which, for example, when, when Alma goes to work, and I remember we both decided to have her wear a transparent trade coat, which was really new at the time, before there were no raincoats were solid colors, etc. Uh, to show the transparency of her character during the rain, she is talking with Lorna yeah, Tolentina. Yeah, that uh, ho holding that uh, umbrella. That's not geographically correct. Beco because, uh, well, uh, unless Alma lived somewhere there, but... Um, and and, and uh, Lorna goes to her. Yeah, goes to her. And she's on the way to... to to work and and her work is in now come to think of it uh, now that you're talking about it much of it was linked by Rojas Boulevard mm -hmm. uh, and, and little branches going out no yeah, yeah. except the parts of Chinatown Pinondo etc uh, but m much of it uh, and it ends in Luneta itself yeah of course they have the sequence in Manila Bay which was terrible because when they got out of those waters they were oily they were stinking and there was shit uh, you, you could you could smell the waters and it was shit an interesting story there is that i talked to sergio lobo who was the cameraman i said for their lsd for their lsd uh, uh sequence what i want to do is i want to get uh those little cups for the candles mm -hmm. and float them by fitting them in small styrofoam. Uh, but is it possible if you can put Vaseline around your, your lens so that it would just be uh, uh, out of focus lights and it's only the face of Sherry and William mm -hmm. that are going to be seen so that all of a sudden these lights come on. And he said, yeah, just paint the styropore uh, orange and so that the, the lights will, will still be warm. Mm -hmm. And so we bought about like 200 and we had two bankas which we lit each and every one of those things and we bamboo slowly as the scene goes on, this thing starts floating in. When we saw the, the rushes, I said, Bernie, that's shit. I mean, he didn't uh, defocus it in any way. I mean, all of a sudden, they're surrounded by stupid candles and styropores. It's ridiculous. This is really bad. We have to reshoot it. He says, no. Just remember, this scene will keep you <laughs> humble the rest of your life. <laughs> because there was no way to test it beforehand. No. It, it, it was, in those days, you waited for three, four, five, one week, two weeks to look at Russia. You didn't know what you had. What I'm monitor, what I'm uh, so I, I took it. Sergio and I are, are, are friends, but that that got in the way for a long time, you know. This, uh, yeah. There was a sense that it was an important movie. Uh, I there was no idea that it, it was going to become an icon type of movie. That. Uh, if, if, if you think of the Marcos years, one of the movies you, you think about is Manila by Night. I, I, we had no feeling about that. We thought it was going to be a just good, bold film. Because um, it didn't show right away. It went through a lot of shit before. Yeah, I, I heard it took like a year before it yeah. was shown. Yeah. Yeah, all, all sorts of uh, uh, censorship uh, that it went through. Well, in, in that era, 
and anything you had to do with sex, you knew it was going to be censored from the very beginning. You just tried to get away with it as much as possible. And at the same time, you were playing that game where you know they censored it in Manila, but show the whole thing in Bulacan. Uh, out, out of Manila, the censorship, they, they, they would just put back the, the cut the cut portions, no, there's no, there, there was, uh, it's two kind of censorship. One was it was a, a sex, and the other one was it was a commentary on the Marcos Manila. On, yeah. uh, and by extension, Manila is not the Philippines, but in the movies, Manila is the Philippines, you know. So what was true for Manila was true for the rest of the, the, the country, so. Yeah. Was it true that uh, Mrs. Mark was, uh, was the one who really put her foot down? Say, yes, uh, uh, as far as the, the talk was concerned, yeah. She, she just said, no, this is not going to happen. The, the good, the true, and the beautiful uh, was definitely not in that, yeah. By that time, already we... Uh, Already the ECP was happening. Uh, we were starting to get uh, very busy with Himala and Oro Plata Mata. So we had uh, other concerns. And already he was working with another production designer. Um, so we would just call each other up and, and, uh, and uh, exchange uh, cheesemates, actually. Yeah. Uh, did you take You know, that's a good question. I don't think so. <laughs> no, but by that time, is that, that's what happens to a movie. A, a movie gets panisered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it doesn't come out at, at, at the right time, mm -hmm. then there's a lot of talk about it. People feel they've seen it already because that was last year, you know, etc., etc. So, as usual, for example, many of the indie films uh, that are being done today, uh, they only get as much audience as they can get from two or three different different uh, festivals in Manila, and then a special showing in UP, etc. So, and then, uh, then they disappear. Uh, but there's always this solid group of moviegoers, people like Onap, uh, uh, Rios, uh, uh, but you, you know, you know the heavyweights that yeah. that, that go around CCP, etc. Yeah. They see all the movies. Yeah. No? Uh, so yeah, uh, th there was a there was an awareness of Manila by night, mm -hmm. but in terms of audience, the grotesco audience, uh, no, they uh, didn't. They, 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 they yeah. And, and, uh, I'm sure so much. I'm sure mother wasn't very uh, happy about that. Uh, yeah. All her big stars did Yeah. 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 No, it, it, it didn't. Uh, uh, it didn't make the money that it was supposed to. Our relationship with, with Bernie went beyond shooting it because, for example, I, I helped. Uh, I helped Abo de la Cruz do Foley for Manila by Night. So Foley? Foley, yeah, sound effects. Yeah, yeah. That's fun. Uh, we, I, I saw the whole movie with, uh, with, uh, while doing Foley on, on it. One thing is, Sibernal always chose Vanishing Tribe to do the music. Mm -hmm. And, that, that was their barcada, and I got into really bad trouble with the barcada because I kept telling Bernali, that's not the right music for any of your films. Uh, very, very, very intellectual jazz. Uh, you know, it, you're, going, you're going to show a, a movie about slums and it's going to be jazz. Uh, I remember. Walang well, connection at all. Maybe Manila by Night could, could stand some jazz, but... And I know that the the wife of the lead uh, of uh, Vanishing Tribe hated me. She wanted to she wanted to beat me up. 
but I kept I, I kept working on Bernie to change your music. I mean, to get get somebody else to to work it out. But on in, in retrospect, jazz would probably have been the right kind of music for my, my, not the right kind, but uh, would be passable as uh, the kind of music to underscore Manila by night. So now you, you, you think you're okay? With uh, not really. I mean, it has been a mission for me from the very beginning. So why are you having jazz here? I mean, uh, believe it, boys, you know. If, if, if nobody in that jail cell would know what even jazz sounded like. You know, and there's no, there's no connection. So, but so in, in other words, I, I saw the movie in the different stages. So, uh, because. Um, we had a very, very, very strong relationship, Bernie and I, that continued into the the editing and everything. Like for example, when I was editing my Auto Platamata for the first time, I had shot six hours. I went there to do my first cut. We spent the whole night choosing what to cut. And at the end of the night, I cut out 45 seconds <laughs> out of six hours. So this went on for a while. And th this was in, um, L which is the one in front of Ropers, LVN, right? LVN. Yeah. This was in one of those uh, rooms in LVN. One night, we're again, Je Jess Navarro and I were working on cutting these little seconds and Bernie knocks on the door and says, can I talk to you? I said, yeah, what? No, 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 let's talk outside. So I went outside. When I went outside, he locked the door. He told just, I go, lock this. Don't, tell, don't let him come back in one week. You, sh you cut the movie. And then he goes in and says, you go home. You rest. Go to sleep. Come back in a week. Let Jess do his work. Uh -huh. yeah, so, get on see Bernie. Get on see Bernie. When we did the uh, Billy Big Boys, the, you had to know what kind of tattoos that you would put in particular. Because what I did is I, I took a whole album of the tattoos in the Quezon City jail. Mm -hmm. And pala, of course, as usual, the Sige Sige Sputnik, uh, it's different in, in, the, in the city jail. But there are identifiers. So th um, these are things that we would find out uh, talking to the prisoners, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. So that, that was Bernal. I mean, Bern Bernal just didn't go from a university uh, level script into the shoot. He'd get that thing and then he'd make it pass through reality first. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is uh, part of his genius. As part of his genius, he uh, he he tried to depict the, the the real world that his characters were living in. We were doing good because we were, we, we went on it visually. Uh, he would go into it into visual and oral, oral. Um, but for example, I'm, I'm, I'm proud that uh, to every time you had a breakfast scene or a dining room scene uh, on a middle class family, um, uh, or upper middle class family, uh, he just set it up there and said, Bernie, you need a maid there. Uh, middle class people have to be served. Uh, not necessarily serve uh, ganon, pero to get the water. Yeah. And yeah. stuff like that, no. And he said, "Yeah, that's right." No, I mean, uh, so I, again, um, what I learned about production design on my own, and I tried to teach that. I, I gave a lot of the a, a lot of uh, production designer big names. Now, I gave a workshop to, and I said, "It's not only the visual." element that's important. Production design is behavior. Why is, why is that 
prop here and not there? Uh, is that prop uh, available to everyone in, in the scene? Or is it only available to the leader of the scene? So where will you put this? It's behavior. Um, I learned it. Yeah. I thought You did, huh? Yeah. And I, I picked it up from, uh, from Apocalypse Now. I picked it up from Dawn. From Dawn, yeah. Mm. No. He had no shot list. He, he had it all in his head. He'd shoot one scene. And he'd tell the, the clapper, uh, shot number two. Shoot, 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 shoot. Next setup, shot number seven. Shot number three. A and he put it together into his head already, all, all uh, the numbers. And then if there was something that would come in, 2A. I couldn't get past the phone. Someone would write it down. It's you know, they, you know, we didn't have a continuity then, a continuity person at that time. But anyway, yeah. Uh, what I mean is, um, see, see, Bernard didn't have scenes that had. Uh, I, I don't know about him a lot, but uh, Bernard's shot list in his head would be seven to eleven numbers long. I, I think somebody should do a thesis on uh, how many shots does it take to do a scene of uh, of, of Vietnam, you know? But from from my awareness, it was seven was plenty, but seven to eleven, seguro uh, shots. And Bernard would have it in his head. He wouldn't he wouldn't give us any uh, breakdown or anything uh, in terms of. A shot list. One thing that he liked was I would go up to him and say, Bernie, we cannot shoot the car crash scene yet. Uh, it needs two hours because they have to bring that car in from this, 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 that, 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 that. Uh, if, you, if you want to shoot something else, you let, you let us know. As long as he knew ahead of time, he was cool about it. But when he would ask for something and somebody uh, what are you talking about? Oh, then he'd get really pissed off. He'd get really pissed off. Same thing as Broca and himself, and frankly, I followed that too. We insisted that whatever we ate was what the crew would eat also. N normally, that became the, the modus operandi. You know? uh, whatever was on the director's table was on the crew table too. But for example, in Girlfriend, um, God, I'm going to forget his, the producer's name. He would send um, Kohol, mm -hmm. which is really good, it's a gata. Mm -hmm. We'd eat from, from that, and then he said, okay, this one's sent to the camera department. And any special thing that came in, you'd take part of it and then you'd send it to the art department, the camera department, uh, the, the different things. I mean, that was, there was this um, Padrino. I, I don't want to take, I, I don't know how he worked with Mel Chonglo, but uh, I, I know that he approached it like he was doing something different when we were working together because of that ledger. And he enjoyed that we had looked at the scene not only from the necessary props, the props that are dynamic, you're going to use them because you discover the letter, you uh, discover the knife, that, that's necessary, but uh, the, the things that go into the, the props that that house doesn't have, so that you identify that house as a, on, on what class it is, mm -hmm. on what kind of people live in it, is it a clean house, is it a dirty house, etc., etc., etc. which now people uh, do that, as, yeah. When, when Bernal uh, chooses to portray Manila, 
you understand the geography, you understand the uh, relationships, you understand the smell of the place. If you look at uh, Manila Sipukun and Liwana, Lino is more interested in the geography of Hilda Coronel's face, the geography of Dembol Rocco's face. Uh, he has these loving close-ups uh, that, that go on forever. And you know, close-ups are really, the, in, should be in the field of television. Uh, close-ups are very powerful, too powerful, so when you use it in the, in the movie too much, it, it brings the movie somewhere else, which is what I think, why I think that most people think that um, Salvador, uh, the, the number one actor of Lino. Uh, Philip. Phil, see, Philip, God bless his soul, he's a, he's a good friend. But people think he's, bet, he's a better actor than he actually is because Lino would give him all the close-ups all the time. So all the time you thought you knew what he was thinking about, etc., etc. Because close-ups are really powerful. See, Lino was more interested in, 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 in people. If you look at uh, um, Manila's Kunang Liwanan, the, 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 the movie goes this way and you get to know the characters, etc., etc. Then Bembol hits the gay, the gay bar scenes mm -hmm. and boom, it, the movie goes somewhere else. It turns left. Mm -hmm. And then it's a, a, a long, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes. I, I, I never... Uh, and for that one, yes, you get the idea. You, you, uh, the, the movie takes another form mm -hmm. from where he was telling the story. It's, it's somewhere else, and it tells the story of the gay scene, etc., etc., and then it goes back to his search, and then we go back to the, yeah. we go back to the movie. Check it out. I mean, the, the gay scene thing really spikes. There's something I want to share, but I can't remember the third part, and I've been trying to think about it. He said, now that you're going to direct, make sure that you always have a clock in your, in your movie, and you have uh, a religious icon, and I think it's water, but I'm not sure. He said, because the clock, because all movies are about time, mm -hmm. and so feature the clock. All Filipino movies are based on religion. So have an icon there or whatever it is. And I think water is because basically our movies are about redemption. And, uh, it's very funny. He called me up and says, Pax, listen, I've been talking bad about you. Huh? Uh, but you have to understand. I mean, I'm the old guy coming up and your movie is beautiful. And, I'm jealous, and uh, it's only human, okay, but we're still friends. And I said, okay, okay Bernie, I, I haven't heard you say anything about it. Well, I'll be, I'll be quoted, but uh, uh, beyond all that, I love you. I was in Hem uh, Lee Street at the time. I love you too, Bernie. Then uh, don't. I don't think I saw him after that anymore. So much so when Marilu Diaz called me up, says, we need your help, Bernie's dead. I said, I'm busy, I can't, I can't make it. Uh, I, I have to finish something for blah, blah. I said, come on, that's, that's Bernie, he's your friend. He said, I, I'm sorry, I can't make it, I can't make it. And um, so she hung up. Uh, and she told me where it was. And, I stayed there for a while, and then I, I, I said, oh, no, he's my friend. So I, I got in the car, and, and I went to the, not to the wake. The, the, his body had just been brought in. And uh, Mel Chonglo was there. See, Marilu, one or two others, which I, I, I can't recall. And he said, oh, you're here. And he said, Yes, I'm trying to gain, you know, he should be here. We're his friends. I said, yeah, uh, what do you want me to do? Well, we're choosing the, the coffins now, and everything we seem to choose are in six figures. 
300,000, 250,000. So we have to work this out. Uh, what can you do? I said, I'll watch his body to make sure that they don't take his penis as a uh, souvenir. I, I've heard before. So I went down and I, and, and I sat down and I watched them. Uh, not only dress him up, but put the big needle here to remove all the dead blood, wash him, etc. Um, I just stayed there until until everything was done, and then they dressed him up. And, uh, and I, I remember combing his hair. And that's the last time I saw Bernie. As, 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 as dead. Consider Marilu and I as uh, next generation from Bernie and Bernie uh, sells a kid, uh, you, you know. Mike De Leon. Mike De Leon, uh, Mike De Leon did the cinematography for Manila's Kuman Liwana and quit because he couldn't take the pressure. Uh, and then he did his um, Kung Mangarap Kat Magising, which is basically like a TV ad commercial, beauty shots, which, which uh, by the way, I think is his best work. Um, but the cliche, I mean, he started in he started in the Broca Bernal uh, uh, reign mm -hmm. and slipped into the next. Uh, I, I wonder where Kisap Mata, uh, when was that made? Uh, 80s, 82? Yeah, so no, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Bernal and Broca are the 70s. And then uh, they started repeating themselves in the 80s. Um, this can be off record if you want. Are, were they friends? Who? Broca and Bernal. No, they weren't, but they had a tremendous amount of respect for each other. Oh. And you realize that they would never talk about each other at all. They, you, uh, there is no mention at all. Uh, no, this this you can you can quote. Uh, since I, I was in, I was a friend to both. Um, you never heard about Bernal at all in in Dino's uh, situation. Even if you were discussing Philippine movies, etc., etc. Elephant in the room. Yeah, but that's but 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 that was true for most. Uh, but that's what we were fighting for, Marilu and I. Uh, because when Bernal and Broca died, all of a sudden the director started to become very personal. Uh, the chisme started coming out. Uh, since um, he died last year, you know, Gil Portes, since Gil Portes was sometimes very difficult, there'd be a lot of talk about him. Etc. Etc. And so Marilu says, "What's what's the matter? I mean, before, uh, ah, see, Silino and and Bernie would send messages to each other. Congratulations, you you've got a hit. It was very, it was very civil. Uh, old world, um, old world politesse, so to speak. You know? But it was an elephant in the room because I never heard anything about." Uh, uh, Broca from Bernal, although I knew that Bernal didn't like Broca's movies. Uh, before, you have to remember, Broca was more known for his Wanted Perfect Mother and all of these melodramas. Yeah. And then he realized all of a sudden that his metier was, uh, was uh, social 
social commentary and, and social analysis. So he went there, and that's when I that's when uh, I lost interest in Broca. I, I found his uh, I, I found his social movies too schematic. You can set up this thing, set up this thing, this thing, this thing. Right. Just change the names, change them. I, I look at the um, film students now, today, 2018, uh, and most of them, most of you, since I'm talking to the students, most of you are concerned with technology. Um, camera especially, the kind of camera, the kind of grips, the kind of lighting that you want to have. And it goes very, very strongly there in the coverage of the camera and how you rack focus from here to here and then move towards there. And uh, your heads are completely taken up or mostly taken up with technique. I find that many young directors don't know how to elicit a performance. They not only, many of them are afraid of the actors themselves. They don't know how, how to achieve a certain performance. Let's go back to performance. Kulang kayo sa knowledge in terms of acting. Uh, an acting workshop would really, really help. Not because you're going to act, but because you're going to expect others, you're going to expect them to do a certain action. You don't know how to get it. You think that says more and more. Give me more, give me more. More what? Um, Also, uh, I, I find that many projects are cold-bloodedly plotted out, and you're using your intelligence to plot out a certain film so that the film comes out, and you'll be able to bring it to a certain festival abroad. It's very festival-oriented. Uh, and of course, why not? No? Because how can you show your movie in the Philippines if you don't show it in one of the Philippine festivals? Uh, the curse of the Indies, he has no distribution, he has no, he has no audience. Uh, many, of, many of our indie films that, that we make nowadays, at the most, they'll get 10,000 10, people watching your movie. 10,000 sounds like a lot, but it's not when you think of how many millions we are in terms of... Uh, population. Um, you, you have to answer a basic question. Why are you making a movie? Why, are, why is your movie important? Why is your movie inevitable? Or are you just expressing yourself? Uh, nothing wrong with expressing yourself, but because you know, if, if I wanted to sing, the most expensive thing would be a guitar that I need to sing, or how much does the karaoke room cost so that you can express yourself. When you get to a movie, you're dealing with different uh, elements. The movie itself, all the different requirements of the movie itself. But at the same time, a movie is shown on a screen because psychologically, it was, it's meant to be seen by a lot of people together. Uh, there's, a difference, there's a difference between watching a movie by yourself, watching it in bed, and watching that same movie with a group of people. There's a certain 
energy that, that happens and you have to tap onto that energy. Movies are for an audience. Um, I'm not sure you're sure about what your audience should be. Uh, so, so that's the problem. It's a big problem. Uh, when you create a car, you know that this car is going to be driven by a family or it's going to be driven by a playboy who's only going to use it to get one date beside him on the car. Or you're going to use the car because you're going to visit your farm and you need uh, a certain amount of power to get through the mud, etc., etc. There is a target for the use of the product. What the indie movement is doing and what you as students are doing, you're bringing a lot of good personal stuff in. When you bring something that's really personal, it becomes very, very special because it becomes unique to you. Um, but then, at the end of the day, you have to show, you have to show what you did that is uniquely you to other people. And it's what, what makes you unique, interesting enough, important enough, valid enough for other people to watch it. These are, these are things you have to answer. And you have to get away from technology and go into human behavior. How do people really behave? Because many times you make people behave because of the camera position. So he's going to go here and then there because it makes a beautiful shot. But in normal terms, without the camera, a person would not do that particular movement. So as I, I'm trying to show you that you are, you are creating things for the sake of the technology, when you should be creating things for the sake of what you uniquely want to portray and the story that you want to tell. And when you tell a story, you always tell a story for people, for other people, not for your friends, not for your thesis master, not for the Cannes Film Festival. Good luck. Because uh, it's important. Uh, the Broca and Bernal are Amor Solo and, and um, Resurrection Hidalgo. You can't say that Philippine art is Amor Solo. You cannot also say, no, Philippine art is Resurrection Hidalgo. Uh, they are both touching Impressionism, but on very, very strong, different things. Broca and Bernal are the Resurrection Hidalgo and uh, Amor Solo of of, cinema, of Philippine cinema, when Philippine cine, cinema was at its golden age. Um, Bernal is more Hidalgo, Broca is more Amor Solo, and the more you understand the differences, the more you will understand film, the more you will really, really, truly understand what film is all about. It's important to know the difference.